Rejoice! Ladies and gentlemen, we finally received some current gen NBA 2K21 news. Because up until this point, everything we heard about the game was about next gen, and that come out in like December and January. Hey, look close, look at me closely now, fellas. We know about the memes that 2K is just roster update year after year after year. Hey, I'm letting you know right now, the vibes that I'm getting, I think this is the highest likelihood of a year where that's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, the world kind of fell apart with a team that's already understaffed in the middle of a console jump year where they had to half their team so they can work on current gen and next gen and get ready for both launches. Man, I'm not looking too optimistically into this current gen, but we did get a flurry of news from Mike Wang on Twitter, and uh, let's get into it, man, because it seems like a lot has changed. And I say seems like because that's what they want to make it seem like. There's a chance that everything is similar. I mean, we've seen the trailer. A lot of animations is returning, right? Somebody asked Mike Wang on Twitter, oh, what the hell is wrong with me? I forgot to tell y'all subscribe to the channel. We upload every other day NBA 2K content. So if y'all want to see that, boom, boom, boom. Somebody asked Mike Wang, will builds with only defense be able to shoot? Mike responds, if you don't put anything into your shooting attributes, it will be a struggle. We've heard this before, and then Mike Wang under the pressure has reverted. And I'm split on this. I used to hate the fact that lockdowns and glass cleaners could shoot the ball, but I'm not as opposed to it anymore because it's only the tippity top players that could do it consistently. Everybody else struggles to do that, right? So it kind of added a little quick little skills gap in there for the people that wanted to play those other builds, but also wanted to have that shot in the corner. Uh, but if Mike Wang's gonna take it out, Mike Wang's gonna take it out. This is something the community wanted for a while, so a lot of people rejoiced in celebration, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Wang responded again saying, the goal is for you to have at least in the mid to high 70s to be a decent threat. If people are consistently hitting as a 51, I'll make a hot fix. So even if, for whatever reason, the game doesn't come out looking the way Mike Wayne wanted to look at it and come out, it's getting a hot fix. So that's interesting. I wonder if with enough pressure, Mike Wang will do the dash one more time. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I mean, I'm happy. I'm slightly happy for that news. So there's that. That was some of the news that people were really excited about. Uh, this is days late, so I'm not going to really go over it. But there is going to be a quick little summary. They dropped a whole blog post on their website detailing some of the changes made to dribbling. You know what I'm saying? So the dribbling system, it seems like, has seen the most changes of anything that we're going to talk about. And just right here, holding the right stick down is your jump shot as normal. Holding your right stick left to right is your escape dribble now. Holding the right stick up is a signature size up. And it just gets into a little bit more detail here. And in a moment where Mike Wang was actually trying to break down for people how layups, timing and aiming a layup is gonna work because there's some changes there. Uh, but I'll leave this link in the description if you guys wanna go through it. But if you guys wanna get the quick little summary, well, Mike Wang gave us a quick little summary over on TikTok. Let's watch the video. Today I'm gonna talk about a few gameplay changes coming your way on NBA 2K21 on current gen. As requested by the community and cover star Damian Lillard, this year you can create oversized point guards, up to six foot eight in my career. Another change we made. Now, hey, real quick, Mike Wang told me about that in the 2K TV interview, but then apparently they, they said like they don't wanna, I guess they plan on releasing it now, so they told me not to talk about it. But in my mind, the first thing I thought about was, isn't that already point forwards? Cause a lot of people was freaking out about the whole six eight point guard thing, saying, wow, who, wow, you can't even make point guards that tall. Yeah, you can, Ben Simmons, Magic Johnson, whatever. But isn't that point forwards anyway? So it's not something that's really, really new to the game, but it is interesting that Damian Lillard made a request that it's in the game. Game, and that was in the game. He's a cover athlete, by the way. So maybe the key to getting what we want is to get Damian Lillard to say it. Made <laughs> was taking out the quick draw badge and moving release speed back into the jump shot creator. We also added 14 new park size ups and 36 new NBA size ups, including James Harden's around the leg dribble, KD's big hezzy cross, and a new version of Kobe's Mamba dance. And a quick note for all the park players. We added around 40 new jump shot landings for you to show off with. Hey, I want to say this just to give some context, you know what I'm saying? When when games come out, there's usually thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and and thousands of new animations. If you get really excited hearing 40 new jump shot landings, you're getting bamboozled right now. This right here is a bamboozle. This will not get me excited. I do not care about jump shot landings to begin with. If even if they told me there was like all kind of different gameplay related and in 40, no, it needs to be thousands. I'm not, I'm being very honest with you. So when you saw there was a lot of recycled animations in the trailer, 
is because there wasn't thousands of new animations added. And in, in the interview, uh, Mike Wang did mention there was an interruption to animation recording because of the Rona and they worked through it. So I'm hoping that the animation is exclusive to current gen, because I know it exists. Everybody knows it exists. We saw the goddamn trailer. It had a whole lot of 2K20 animations. I hope it's not like that in next gen. But for current gen, I am not excited about the prospect of 40 new jump shot landings or 12 size ups. I'm not. But one of the biggest changes we made this year is the new pro stick functionality. So using the right stick is going to take your shooting and your dribbling to the next level. So for dribbling, we remap the controls to give you access to more moves and overhaul dribbling in general to be way more responsive and chainable. And when you shoot with the right- Okay, okay, that right there. One of the biggest things about 2K was, first of all, the servers is ass. So it's, it doesn't feel responsive, right? But even when you click a button on your controller, boom, the animation takes a lot of time for it to begin. And so it doesn't feel responsive doubly. And that's a very frustrating experience. And so, first of all, that's, that is, I'm not exaggerating, the most exciting thing I've heard from all the news that's released so far. Not only is the game gonna feel more responsive when I click something that happens, but on top of that, the dribbling is gonna be more chainable, which means people who enjoy learning the art of dribbling are gonna have a lot more fun. I hope that's the case now, man, because I'm saying there was years where dribbling was more chainable in NBA 2K, and the devs actively moved to remove some of those chains because they thought it was too overpowered. So they spent a lot of the year nerfing those animations, and I hope that doesn't happen this year. Uh, if it's really overpowered, yes. If it's effective, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Right stick this year, there's a new shot meter that allows you to time and aim your shots. So if you can master both of those, you're gonna be in great shape. So that last thing he said about both timing and aiming your shot, a lot of people had a problem with that. A lot of people were a little unsure about it because we've never seen it in an NBA 2K game before. Or have we? Ladies and gentlemen, we literally seen it in 2K17. If you remember, at the launch of 2K17, Mike Wang told us that if you use the right stick to shoot, you have to time the jump shot so it's in the green window, but you also have to aim it either directly down or directly up. If you hit it a little bit diagonal, that means the aim of the shot was off and your shot would miss in that direction. But if you got both of them correct, there was a significant boost to your shooting. Within one and a half months of that being a feature in the game, uh, I remember I, I dropped like a 70 point game on Pro-Am with uh, Stephen Curry's jump shot, just using the jump shot stick. Cause everyone was so hooked to square, I was like, let me try out this new jump shot stick thing. It wasn't really new, people shot like that since time on 2K, but giving it a boost if you did it correctly was new. And that was nerfed and removed from the game. They significantly nerfed the boost immediately. So the fact that they're reintroducing it to the game means that it's something that they really believe in. It's not new to the game, fellas. There have been 2Ks in the past where you had to both aim and time your shot. And in my opinion, that is my preferred way of doing it. Mike Wang, actually, I'm gonna let Mike Wang kind of explain some of it too because uh, a lot of people had questions about it and he was answering some of them here on Twitter. When you shoot with the pro stick, the meter only shows the ideal aiming point which you use the stick to target. You don't see timing so you have to know your release if the shot meter was off. The key to making layups with the pro stick this year, instead of holding the stick to the left or the right, Hold it to the direction you want for a brief moment, then quickly rotate at 12 o'clock to find the ideal aim point. Joe Knows dropped this meme right here, everyone on launch day, <laughs> and we see a wide open blown layup-esque phantom slice, and Agent Zero just had to get that quick little 10 out of 10 good quality meme right there. NBA 2K has tried to complicate the process of uh, doing layups in the past, and even though I'm for it, very casual players are not for it because it's like, why do we need that complication? But Mike Wang actually explains that it's not really that more complicated and it's an option for people that want it. J Live asks, is there an option on the right stick to change it to the way it was on 2K20? Mike Wang responds, yes. Is Team Pro-Am gonna be on the green or miss sliders? Mike Wang responds, Team Pro-Am will use competitive sliders. Can we turn off the meter and shoot with the right stick and still have boost or can you only do one? Mike Wang responds, you can turn off the meter and shoot with the right stick, but it will only be timing based like 2K20. It won't also be based on the aim of your shot. The shot button will work similarly to 2K20, though a lot of retuning has been done. I don't really know what that means. And 2K has assured us for the next gen version of the game that everyone's not gonna be shooting with square they were the way they were in the past. And you know what's crazy is, I feel like when a lot of the times when games make changes to the controls, I, I, 
I feel like it's done just to convince us that something is different with the game. But for the purposes of what's being done right now, even though I'm anxious because this is 2K we're talking about, I genuinely believe that Mike Ryan made these changes because they want the game to improve. Because they've tried these changes lately in the past and did the dash back in the opposite direction because people weren't happy with it. So I'm curious, once we actually get the game, what the reaction is going to be and if there's going to be any changes to the system after that. But it seems like this year, unlike 2K17, no, there was even in 2K17, there was options to just use the old shit, and people still hated the new shit even though they didn't have to use it. So you think it should be this way for wide open layups? Fast breaks too? I don't agree. It's a layup, not a jump shot. I've gone back and forth on this, but settled on wide open. You can basically ignore timing and aiming and still hit. So you don't have to try on a fast break. You still make the bucket. Uh, Mike Wang argued at some point in one of these tweets that it, there's just more of a skills gap to the aiming and timing. Uh, you will start off probably doing poor this way because it's something new. Really, we haven't really been using it like that. People use square button. Mike Wang at some point in these tweets argued there's just more of a skills gap to the aiming and timing, but there's still an option to do the other one. There's some benefits to doing the aiming and timing, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. You're still gonna hit layups and jump shots effectively if you know what you're doing. As Mike Wang mentioned in that quick little video, somebody asked if quick draw is gonna be a next gen. He said it's gone forever. Thank the Lord, you know what I'm saying? We don't need something like that in the game. Just a quick little quality of life update. I'm not trying to play my career till December just to unlock a jump shot crater so I could use it in the park. Stupid. Which one gets a bigger boost? Meter using the pro stick? or no meter and shooting. He said pro stick. Okay, all right, interesting. You can still use the button and be very successful. The pro stick just have a wider skills gap. Some will do better with it in comparison, but some will shoot a ton of air balls. My advice is to try both and see what fits you better. Mm, options. All right, so that's kind of just it on that note. We're gonna have to actually play the game to see how it feels, but if it's anything like 2K17, I'm gonna let you know right now if you guys have never shot with the right stick. I, I saw a poll somewhere on Twitter and they asked who shoots with the right stick, who shoots with the button, and 91% of people said they shoot with the button. That's a large majority, especially considering in past 2Ks, 2K10, 2K11, it was very common to shoot with the right stick. In fact, that was the only way to shoot in some games. And so it seems like 2K's just making a return to that. But if you have never done it before, you'll get used to it. The only thing I'll say is it wasn't as responsive in 2K17 when I was using the right stick because going down on the right stick is a dribble move. So you have to hold it and the game has to register. You're not trying to do the dribble move. You're trying to do a jump shot. And so just that delay made it feel a little less responsive. So I'm hoping that's not the case anymore. And I feel like the way they've reconfigured the controls, hopefully optimized for that. I hope they're game testing this because the game tester will be able to tell you that, but we'll leave that on that note. Mike Wang says there are more jump shooting fouls when you make contact with the shooter on bad or late contest this year. I, listen, this right here could be a very bad idea, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out, but I don't like the idea of fouling jump shooters, man. <laughs> Cause it's just random, it's random. It's gonna be a random animation that literally does not need to exist. And if the game is incredibly unresponsive and the servers are asked, sometimes you're not gonna have much options but a late or a bad contest. Mike Wang also mentioned that Pogo Stick is still in the game but it was nerfed. He se It seemed like a lot of, even the Intimidator badge, a lot of people asked him questions about that. He didn't remove it from the game but he said that it just needed to be re reworked. After hearing all that news, I'm a little disappointed. I'm excited by simple quality of life updates but I don't feel like it needs a brand new game. I think all of those things could have easily been accomplished in 2K20. They just want to sell the game again, which makes sense. 2K is a business. We know that shit. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself like, man, I really currently have maybe like 1% hype. Maybe because of the new chaining thing he was talking about with the dribbling. That's all the hype that I have for the current gen version of the game. I hope at some point that changes when more information releases. As of right now, I genuinely believe that for me, the only game I could current, I'm more excited about next gen that we barely know anything about than current gen, even though they just told us all this information. So at this point, we just wait and see. I guess they're gonna continue to drop news. We know that there's a 2K beach, so I don't think we're gonna be playing in the same neighborhood. They might be bringing affiliations back. This 2K21 on current gen, ladies and gentlemen, might be the year where all the stuff we asked for from previous 2Ks that were simple to do, they just bring those back. And I'm not gonna lie to you, if they do that, I will be disappointed 
but I might not be frustrated though. Because yeah, you want something new, you don't want to just relive from the past, but a lot of people do. People have been asking for affiliation since they stopped doing it in 2K17. I mean, they stopped doing it in 2K18. 17 was the last year they did it. But Ryan 2K put out this tweet saying, gameplay details dropping for 2K21 current gen. You'll get your hands on the demo when it comes out on 824, tribute to Kobe, obviously. And he linked to the full gameplay, the vlog that Mike Wang summarized on TikTok. So if you wanna know when you should or shouldn't be excited for the game, it'll be downloading the demo on uh, 824, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just gonna wait for that day, cause right now I have very, very, very little hype for the current gen version of the game. And I genuinely believe the reason that 2K hasn't been promoting it OD is because they can't find to promote about it. Because in past years, there's too much exciting things like new neighborhood here, or new game mode in my team, new engine in here. But when there's nothing to talk about, you might mention 40 jump shot landings as the first bit of news. That's really about it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure we're gonna hear more news, you know, as we wait for this demo to release. When the demo release, we hop on the game and see what they was talking about. And I genuinely believe it's just gonna be 2K20 with some quality of life updates. But hopefully I'm proven wrong and I'm blown away. The chances that happens though, highly unlikely. So I guess the the really the real chance I'm gonna have to be blown away is gonna be next gen. So I'm gonna be sitting here waiting for next gen. But I, I don't wanna just on the game that I haven't seen yet. So that's why I'm saying my opinions are reserved. I'm just making some bland, vague predictions based off of the differences in the promotion from last year's to this year. Hey, if you guys enjoyed though, man, y'all new to the channel, let me know what you guys think about 2K21 current gen so far. This is all the news that we know. Uh, if y'all new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and some videos on the screen right now, ladies and gentlemen. Otherwise, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.